CompTIA A plus Core 1 Complete Training Course. Exam Objective 3.4 Given a scenario, install and configure motherboards, central processing units, and add-on cards, BIOS, and UEFI. Before we get into the intricacies of BIOS and UEFI, it's essential to grasp the concept of firmware. Firmware is a type of software that is embedded into electronic devices to control their operation. It resides in the hardware of the device and is responsible for managing its basic functions, such as booting up, controlling input and output operations, and facilitating communication between hardware components. Unlike general-purpose software applications that can be installed and uninstalled, firmware is designed to be more permanent and is essential for the basic functioning of the device. In the case of motherboards, the traditional firmware interface is called the BIOS. BIOS, or Basic Input-Output System, has been a staple in computers for decades. Its primary function is to initialize hardware components when you start up your computer. This process, known as the power on self-test or post, involves a series of diagnostic tests to ensure that critical hardware elements, such as the processor, memory, and storage devices are working properly. After completing the post, BIOS then locates and loads the operating system from the storage device while also managing interactions with the computer's hardware. In recent years, UEFI has gradually replaced BIOS. UEFI, short for Unified Extensible Firmware Interface, offers several advantages over traditional BIOS, including support for larger storage devices, faster boot times, and a more user-friendly interface. Unlike BIOS, which relies on a basic text-based interface, UEFI provides a graphical user interface that allows users to interact with firmware settings more intuitively. Additionally, UEFI supports Secure Boot, a feature that helps protect the system against malware by verifying the integrity of the operating system during the boot process. In order to access the BIOS or UEFI settings on your computer, you'll need to follow a few simple steps. Begin by restarting your device. During the startup process, Keep an eye out for a message or logo that indicates which key to press to enter the setup utility. Common keys include Delete, F1, F2, F10, or Escape, but the specific key may vary depending on your computer's manufacturer. Once you've identified the correct key, press it repeatedly as soon as you see the message or logo appear on the screen. Timing is important here, so be ready to press the key immediately upon startup. If successful, you'll be taken to the BIOS or UEFI setup utility. From the setup utility, you will find a range of options for configuring your computer's hardware and firmware settings. So, are you interested in covering a few common scenarios with me? Well, all right then. Scenario 1. Picture yourself installing a new hard drive into your computer to expand storage capacity. However, Upon booting up your computer, you notice that the new hard drive is not being detected. Concerned, you enter the BIOS setup utility to investigate the issue. You navigate to the storage configuration settings and verify that the new drive is recognized. If the drive is not listed, you may need to adjust the drive settings or boot order, which determines the sequence in which the computer accesses storage devices. This scenario also holds true for other hardware installations, like memory modules, expansion cards, or USB devices. Always check the devices are enabled and properly configured following an installation. Scenario 2. Suppose you're concerned about the security of your data and decide to enable drive encryption using technologies like BitLocker. However, you encounter an issue where the drive encryption process is not proceeding smoothly. Suspecting that the trusted platform module, TPM, may not be enabled, you access the BIOS setup utility to investigate. Within the security settings, you locate the option to enable the TPM, a hardware-based security feature that enhances data protection. With the TPM now enabled, the drive encryption proceeds seamlessly 
providing an additional layer of security for your sensitive data. Okay, one more scenario before moving on, and this time I will use the UVFI interface in my example. Imagine you want to set up a virtual lab environment to test different operating systems and software configurations. To accomplish this, you plan to use virtualization software. However, when attempting to create virtual machines, you encounter errors indicating that virtualization support is not enabled. Suspecting that virtualization support may be disabled in the UEFI settings, you access the setup utility to investigate. Within the UEFI interface, you would look for options such as Intel Virtualization Technology or AMD-V, which enables virtualization support. After ensuring that virtualization support is enabled, you restart your computer. Now with virtualization enabled, you can create and run virtual machines smoothly, facilitating your experimentation and testing processes. In each of the scenarios described, accessing the BIOS or UEF I setup utility played a pivotal role in resolving hardware-related issues and optimizing system performance. BIOS and UEF I provide users with direct control over essential hardware configurations allowing them to adjust settings such as memory allocation, storage detection, security features, and virtualization support. By navigating through the BIOS or UEFI interface, users can fine-tune their computer's hardware settings to suit their needs, ensuring optimal performance and compatibility with various software configurations. In addition to controlling hardware configurations, BIOS, and UEFI also play a role in managing peripherals such as USB devices. Within the BIOS or UEFI settings, users can configure USB permissions to control access to connected devices. This feature is particularly useful for enhancing security by preventing unauthorized access or malicious activities through USB ports. By adjusting USB permissions, users can mitigate potential security risks and safeguard their system against external threats. Lastly, BIOS and UEF I offer additional security features such as BIOS passwords and boot passwords. A BIOS password restricts access to the BIOS or UEF I setup utility, preventing unauthorized users from making changes to critical system settings. Similarly, a boot password adds an extra layer of security by requiring users to enter a password before the operating system boots up. These password protections help safeguard sensitive data and prevent unauthorized access to the system, enhancing the overall security posture. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more great content.